Hello and welcome to another session of Coffee With. I am your host, Sainu Bujang, and with me, I have someone very special, someone who loves to work with youth and encourage the young people to do better and follow their dreams. I won't introduce him, though. I'll let him do that himself. <laughs> So please tell Coffee with your name and what you do. Well, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure being on this wonderful show, of course, The Coffee. And then, like I said, uh, my name is Baba Sise. Many people know me, The Balance. And of course, The Balance, uh, I, I'm the CEO of The Balance Crew. It's a youth organization that was formed back in 2013. Uh, we have been uh, doing most of the youth work, like most of the time we do youth works with the society. We contribute to, you know, societal development in terms of voluntary services. So that's basically what uh, Balance do. But of course the Balance stands for, uh, is, a, is a youth organization that promote education and innovation mm -hmm. in all forms. Okay. It's a pleasure having you on Coffee with Baba Sise. Please tell Coffee with though, who was Baba Sise before he became the founder of the Balance Crew? All right. Thank you very much. That's a wonderful question. And of course, if I go back uh, my primary school, I did my primary school in Queen Alla Law Basic School in, uh, back in, in Kiang. I know the Badimunkas are watching me on that. Uh, but of course, uh, is uh, Queen Alla. That is LR found in LR, Kiang Central. Uh, from law basic, uh, law basic school, I also go to Queen Alla Upper Basic School. I was the head boy by then. And of course, during my primary school, I was one of the best students there too. And then when I graduated from Queen Alla Upper Basic School, I also you know, attended Nusrat Senior Secondary School where I, t I did my uh, commerce. It's called a commerce subject. I was in commerce one. And then from Nusrat Senior Secondary School, I was also part of the councillors uh, during my year, 2000, and, uh, during my grade 11. And from grade 11, then I, from grade 12, I graduated New Russian Secondary Schools. And then I attend, I did uh, my certified accounting technician, that is CAT, which, uh, which another level, the ACCA level, which is level two of ACCA. And then I started, of course, from there, that's where my academic stopped. For the time being before i joined the university because that was just recently but before that uh, what i did was i was also working with the school with the nusra senior secondary school at uh, management school to assist them on certain things sometimes i even help in lecturing some of the certified accounting technician students also from there i was later employed february uh, 15th of february by gt bank GT Bank employed me. I was there for almost up to May 2015. Mm -hmm. That was the time I resigned uh, from GT Bank. But before resigning, uh, the, we wrote a project with GRS in partnership with GRS. We won a five million dollar seed project uh, from the EU, which is the GCC, a Global Climate Change Alliances project. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, of course, I work as the project coordinator on the GCC, which was GRS slash GCC. You know, is GCC. <laughs> a project and then where I was the project coordinator and then of course going further down I also work uh, with Afronaut as their commercial manager I also travel in other countries to also do some businesses for them and from Afronaut I also work as a assistant at o uh, in Observer as a business assistant a business consultant you know and then now currently I'm doing my own businesses uh, that is consulting on media and also on business. But that's exactly what I studies. Okay. In 2017, I joined the University of the Gambia to do political science. Which currently, I also shift my uh, my my uh, field from political science to public admin. So I'm currently studying public admin. This is my third year. That's an amazing profile, Baba. You, I must say, you have done a lot and achieved a lot. And I like your confidence because you said you was one of the best students. You know. So you have confidence in yourself. Um, moving on, we would like to know also, what was it like growing up back in the days in Kiang Central? Is it Kiang Central, right? Yeah. Yes. What was it like growing up as a young barber? Well, it's fantastic. Well, let me tell you one thing. The beauty in, in a village is that there is a peaceful ground for you to do a lot of activities if you want to do it. And that's beautiful. When I was in the village, 
there were a lot of you know amazing things that i you know especially let me even remember back you know when i used to join with my friends to go to the bush to hunt animals you know that i still remember you know most, if some of them are watching they know what i'm t telling them you know it's something that i enjoy actually i don't even enjoy you know catching the animal or even trying to eat the animal at the time that many people enjoy but you know during the running that is one thing i enjoy during my life in kiang the other thing i enjoy in my life in kiang is that there's harmony you know when you are in a village we know each other we consider each other as family that's the beauty in a village when you are there you learn a lot when it comes to you know molding you the villagers take in charge the elders take in charge and there was a high level of respect whether you like it or not you must respect our elders mm -hmm. so you know of course we know in our modern days that when kids there is no the moral values are losing you know when people are adopting this western life so there is no respect to our elders so we're losing it and that's exactly why we are also blind when it comes to even getting married you can even hear you can see that when it comes to achievement sometimes we fail because we fail to respect our elders so that's one beautiful things when i was back in uh, in kiang and also of course when you are in the village you you go to the farms you know you go to the pharaohs these are beautiful things these are things that you definitely miss when you leave the village so these are memories back in the village and if at all i answered your question well these are some of the things i definitely definitely remember back in the village so we'll now move on to um, your initiation which is the balance crew do talk coffee with what inspired you to start such initiative uh, let's start from the balance itself what it means the balance it means you know of course you're talking about an equilibrium whenever you say the balance you're talking about the middle so anything you do it has to be balanced so we realize that okay what are things that are not balanced we realize that Gambia we go to schools we graduate you know but where is the results where is the stuff where is the education where is the knowledge it has to be there and that is exactly what we said educate to innovate learn think and create yeah. so the balance started with the form of me saying okay look you know what we are definitely going to make sure that these two are balanced because you cannot go to school you graduate you can do nothing yeah. all you do is to search for a job yeah. you understand even if you are at your workplace to innovate ideas is a problem you know balance come up with the problem with this program called educate to innovate whereby we were now formed the balance crew so the balance crew started with a media advocacy of you know oneness advocacy of promoting innovations you know and education then we from there we now grow the organization into a big organization whereby we now invite youths to come up there are a lot of youths who pass through balance they learn a lot because when you the first time you come into balance what we ask you is do you have a talent we realize that those young ones with the talents if you mold them they can turn into be something else so we first of all train you to have that confidence in you that there is something that God gifted you you understand that take it out pull it out don't fear you know you know the shyness in some of the Gambians many Gambians they have talent they have it all but they are shy sometimes it drive them from you know spilling it out to benefit the public and you know very well innovation is very very important now I'm going to say this the balance when it forms when it was formed we are different when it comes to our hierarchy in terms of the way we arrange ourselves because first of all you have the ceo on top there then from the ceo you have the ex secretary general the secretary general is the one who runs the affairs of the organization then from the ceo you have the secretary general the secretary general then you have the finance and after the finance then you have the three branches now these three branches are very very important you have the ci unit the central innovation unit these are the people who create ideas most of most of the ideas comes from me i pass it to them they will go and do the research then they when they want the ideas to be perfect they pass it to the researchers we call them the achievers these are the people who do research and they get back to the CI unit. From the achievers, then we have this pattern. So this is how balance work. We have the CI unit. These people create ideas. They pass it to the achievers. Achievers research whether the idea is fit, to, you know, to be implemented. If it is fit, they pass it back to the uh, CI unit. The CI unit will now take it to the CU to approve. When it approve, they will give it to the Spartans to implement because that's what Spartans do. They just do implement. So that's how our organization operate. For in the past, we have a lot of youth organized youth in the organization of course you understand some will come some will go but the organization stay the same i keep telling them i said if you have a good leader 
even if I told everybody leave the organization as far as the leader is focusing on the goals and objective of the organization and he is working every day and night and respecting the rule of the organization if you have few members you can make it numbers don't matter that's one of our Spartan rules if you are committed you are determined you can definitely make it and that's why balance still exists so balance in the past has achieved a lot in fact when it comes to volunteerism we were considered number one in this country and I can challenge any organization thank you Baba after knowing everything that you said that Balance does and has been doing, um, we know that any business you do get involved in has challenges. So please tell us about those challenges, just a few of them. You know, everybody faces challenges. Even the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, faced his problem during his road to make sure that Islam is established. So challenges are always ahead of you. Sometimes they are, div they, they are different in terms of their nature. But let me tell you, Gambia, one of the biggest challenges we all face as youth, not only balance, is the leadership. We don't have leaders who represent us. We are youth groups. We are formed to voluntarily rest, uh, uh, you know, contribute to the national development. But we don't have support. That's one of the major challenges youth groups have here. They have objectives, and some of these objectives require small resources. That small resources to get it from this department is a problem. And yet still, they will so-called write beautiful languages when they are giving their, their, their end-of-the-year end reports, saying that they have supported a lot of youth. They don't. They don't support youth. Gambians don't value ideas. In a country where people don't compete for ideas, they compete for their individual pockets, that country never grows. And that is one of the problems of Gambia. Most of the idea we do, we can see that the same idea is replicated in other countries and they are doing it well and today is supporting a lot of them. We know ideas that are implemented and here today they are in another country that they need to mention na names of countries. And those countries are implemented and it's successful. Why? It's because Gambians don't value ideas. Our organizations, we deal with ideas and we create brilliant ideas. Even if you ask some of the people, like, for example, let's take, for example, the Youth of the Month, the Youth of the Year Award. It's just not an award. This is an award where the youths compete for national development. When, that's why it is called, when youths compete for national development, what will be the outcome? That's a brilliant idea. We did it. Then, Asana, it was very tough. We don't have support. We have to push it, push it until it was successful. But the problem of the Gambia, in the Gambia is that they don't value ideas. And you cannot value ideas. For example, you can be gifted with resources, with money, but you might not be gifted when it comes to ideas. The person that is gifted with ideas, you with your resources, you join together to make sure that that idea is established and it supports a lot of people. Gambians don't know that. If you don't have nothing, nobody cares about you. When even if you are speaking knowledge, that will benefit the entire country. As far as you are nobody, as far as you are down there, nobody cares about whatever you say. Somebody who is rich might not have the ideas. I might be very, very poor, but I might have ideas that God gifted me. And I keep saying this thing. If we do not value ideas, we will never grow. And that's one of another big challenges. We will create brilliant ideas and we will write it in a concept. We will send it to these departments. They will never support us. They always give us false information. That's another challenge. The other challenges also we face is because young people, we as young people have to understand one thing. You don't come into a place and you want that place to transform you that the same day. My friend, I saw white people that are working in 10 years to 15 years, 20 years in one, with one idea. They never succeed. But after 35 years, their son and kids will come over and they will make sure that they, they, their parents' uh, objective is, su is successful. Then so We've seen those ideas. They are working. Gambians don't believe in time. They believe in fast money. So some of the youths we deal with, they just want to come in. You start giving them funds, benefits. It doesn't work that way. That is another challenge. So membership is another challenge. They will come, they will go out. Well, it is open. It is also not closed, so you can go out anytime. But the problem is that it doesn't rain one day. We have to understand that 
things cannot just happen in one day we have to work hard to make sure that this country grow the other problem too is that so-called youth organizations that represent youth in this group only represent their individual pockets they do not represent the youth and this is one of our major problems in the gambia what they do is that they will claim they represent us but when they go out there all they do is they represent themselves then when they come back that's why they don't do anything there are a lot of youth who went out for trainings they went outside for trainings they traveled they came back then and they claim they represent us what are they doing nothing what results are you seeing in the country nothing in fact volunteerism has reduced drastically because everybody is working for its individual pocket where is the country lies the country lies in our hand and we hold it this way and we throw it on the, in the dustbin our individual pocket is what we are considered but i'm telling you if you want to build a house and you demolish the roof of the house then I that and you say that I'm going to develop my individual cell I'm going to put food in those refrigerators and everything when the rain falls what happened it destroy everything so before we only think about ourselves we should think about our country because it's the roof that we live under then I that and that is what the belief that is the belief that Gambians don't have that is a constraint that is one of the bigger challenges and me I am you know when I started the balance since 2014 uh, with GRTS, up to date the balance is running. Consistency. Then I said that. And that is one thing people don't believe in. I believe in timing. I've said everything is timing. Whatever you are following, as far as you never give up, you keep pushing, you will definitely get there. Some people don't get that beliefs. So if you are working with them, you will definitely fail because you need their hands with you. Then I said, if they don't have that concept, you will definitely fail. And I'm telling you, you cannot sit down in your house and fall in your hands and you want to make it. It doesn't happen that way. You have to sweat for it every day. And if you don't sweat for it every day, you will never make it. Finally, let me just tell you one of another constraints that we have in the country. We as young people should be united. We should not be divided. If we want youth to be grown, if we want our youth everywhere, if we want our organization, if we want to make sure that youth are promoted, youth are valued, youth are respected, we have to be united. We don't have to allow politics to divide us. We need to have one voice and we don't have that. Because we don't have that, nobody cares about the country. If your party member is ruling, I am a youth, I don't want to voluntarily contribute. I want the country to even go backward instead of going forward. So we are not united. In the sense that we are not united, we are divided. So that's why when we even have one goal to make sure that we make sure that the government to achieve that goal for us, the government will never listen to us. You know why? Because we are not united as youth. That is another problem. I am an organization, I create an organization. You are creating the same organization, the same objectives that I'm doing. I asked you to partner with me, you said no because I am in a that party. That is another constraint. Then and they look at you as an individual, judge you, they will not judge you the activities you are doing. And that is, there is no unification. What is Africa crying today? Africa is having all the resources. Africa is having the brains. Africa is having everything. It's only one thing Africa is crying for unification and that is what we lack <laughs> well Baba that was very intense very interesting and um, you mentioned a few factors that I think um, you know we need to look back on you said us young people are not unified and um, you know th you ha you're so passionate about the way you're saying it so give us one reason why you think us young people are not unified if I am to answer your question very well of course, well, people will say one of the reasons why we are not united is politics. Of course, politics is dividing us. But if I am to give you one reason why we are not united is grudge. Senegal, grudge is everywhere in the world. We know that. But the, if I told you are to rate it in the Gambia, it's 99%. You understand that? You, as a young person, cannot sit in your home. And I work hard, very, very hard. And even, even if I don't work hard and God gifted me, of whatever I have, why should you grudge me? Why should you fight me? We are one people, one nation. Why is the fighting? Why do I have to go to a place and then say bad things about you? Why do I have to go on Facebook and destroy you, my fellow Gambian? So the world will laugh at us. That's why, because we spend all our time fighting each other on Facebook, those other worlds, they are advanced and they are going, growing every day. When you ask them about Gambian youth, when you ask them about Gambians, they will say it's a country that is full of ignorance people. 
I deny that. But to, a, to an extent, I tell Gambians that it is now that we are aware, we wake up, we make sure that the outside world see us in another way. See us the other part, the real part of us. That means we are hardworking and we are ready to work instead of fighting each other. Senator, you have a car. Why should I grudge you? Senator, you are advancing. Why should I grudge you? You are selected to represent the Gambia. Why should I grudge you? This is the problem. This is why we are divided. So that means when you are selected, by the time you come, I will keep going around and telling people bad things about you so that you could be destroyed. That is grudge. Purely grudge. And that's one of our problems. Um, you said grudge. Grudge is a very heavy um, reason why you know the young people aren't unified. But I do hope and pray that one day we become unified and you know just have the same love that we should have for each other. What do you think is the problem in regards to young people being serious about organizations? Because these organizations are here to groom us and guide us in the right direction so that we, we can become more innovative. Seeing that you're a part of an organization, not your own, but what do you think is a problem and why aren't young people becoming more um, active in these young groups? Well, before answering that question, I want to just go back a little bit of uh, the earlier question that you asked me. I, I made mention of grudge. You know, a person that is grudge, he has what he called fear and fear is evil. When you grudge somebody, it's like you fear him to go ahead of you. That fear is evil. And definitely, you are a parasite walking within the street. You don't even know that. You are even worse than the plasmodium parasite. Because you live in the flesh of the people. When the mosquito only live in the blood of the people. Within the blood of the people. But let me tell you one thing. That is one of the reasons why you should not be a parasite. Why should you be grudge? So I just want to make sure that anybody who is grudge of his own fellow is a parasite. You understand? He's definitely a more dangerous parasite. Well, going back to your question, you know, one of the problems why youths recently are not engaged in, in organization, I'm going to tell you this, and it's definitely true. Don't blame them. They have a point. So anyway, I cannot join in a youth organization whereby we should have a body that should coordinate this youth organization from the government to make sure that this youth organization contribute to societal development. What Paul Gagami is doing is that he's now telling the youths that you are the present and the future leaders. You make sure that you take in charge of your own development. So the government is now influencing, he's involving in youth development. Now what the Gambian government is doing, he's isolating the youth thinking that the youth are violent, there are people causing the violence. But I'm telling the government, there are youth in this country, it might not be me, that are brainly gifted by God. If you involve them, you include them, wallahi, they will develop this country. It's not a joke. This is not something that I'm just saying. This is something that I see my naked eyes. These are young people that are vibrant. These are young people that are gifted, but they have been isolated. Even if they found a youth group, they have brilliant objectives, nobody listens to them. So what happened? They collapse. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, that is one of the reasons. The other reason is youth organizations in this country are supposed to be coordinated well. I'm telling you, well coordinated. Meaning, you don't need to give them only fun. Because most of the works they do, they are voluntary works. All you need to do is that their activities are supported. They are motivated. They are involved. That's what motivation is all about. Motivation is not about only money. Because most of them, their activities are just small amount of resources. Small amount of resources that will not disturb the government quarters. But you write to them. You write the government or you write the private sectors. They will tell you, go come in tomorrow, next tomorrow, next week. They make you give up. So you said, okay, look, there is no need for us to have a youth organization anymore because it's useless. We have brilliant ideas, we have good objectives, but nobody supports our objectives. So should we continue to be voluntary, you know, for the rest of our life? No, we need support. Even those voluntarily we are doing, we just need a little bit, small, small support. They don't give us those supports. What do you expect? They will not join the youth organization. You join some of the youth organizations, they are very corrupt. Like balance, time to time, they will be sending their youths youth for training. And they are the ones who are control, uh, uh, controlling their own funds. 
Nobody's controlling it. They make decisions on their phones. They understand that. Other organization, you bring these youth groups and when the money comes, you eat the entire money. How will you expect those youth groups to survive? They will not survive. Two, who is behind these youth groups? Then I said that. Now, most of these youth groups, they are attending conferences. Let me tell you one thing. Some of them, they attend conferences, they come back with heavy, heavy heart to develop this country. When they come, they will have brilliant ideas. They will write it. Nobody listen to them. What do you expect? They will collapse. They understand that. And of course, Gambians don't believe in consistency. They believe in pride. Some Gambian youths, some of them, let me be, not be wrong there, some of them, most of them, they believe in pride. So when you tell them one thing, like they are angry, they are out. They don't want to work with you anymore. That also will, is weakening us, is pride. We need to forget about pride. Let's go for our, what we want. If I'm telling you, you see, I'm going to show you all of you, I'm going to show you all of you, I'm going to show you all of so they will not tell you small thing and you get angry and you said i don't want it anymore and that is within the youth we have pride compared to senegalese youth they go for their they, 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 whatever they want they will even they will even praise you they will pray sing you then they will you know do whatever just to make sure that they they convince you we don't want to do that we want to say when we go to the government and they deny us it's over the government is wrong. The, these people are not supporting us. Let's try to motivate them. Let's try to convince them, sorry. Let's try to make sure that we convince them. That convincing tool should not be a pride. But you should be somebody who is very wise and make sure that knowledge is not only given to you to utilize it within yourself. You have to utilize it outside. So wherever you go, whatever experience you have, whatever knowledge you have, it should transfer it. So if you don't want to use that, you want to use pride, you fail. And that's exactly what, why we are failing. So Baba, that was um, interesting. I must say, sometimes it's not everything you can comment on once you've answered the um, question. But we're getting close, and this is my favorite part. This is where you give the young people words of wisdom. So what do you have to share from your heart? to inspire the young people the word there you mentioned wisdom is a brilliant word used by a lot of philosophy in fact they will tell you a great philosophers are people with wisdom I will now tell them that let us strive to have wisdom in us because wisdom could be given to you you see youths out there I'm telling you this let's take for example why the youths in Switzerland, in Australia, in England, and other countries are campaigning for climate change? Why those 10 year, 16 year old kids are going to the street and saying that we want you to save our planet? Why? We want it, you to save our planet today and tomorrow. Why? It's because they know they are the present and the future leaders. They will be the one to live in it. We expect them that in the future they are the one going to live in it. This country does not belong to any individual leader. It belongs to us, all of us, but especially us as the youth. If we make this country, the house look good for us, both now and in the future. If we don't make it better, then it becomes fire on us. And for us to make it better, the first thing I would advise youth out there is to respect their education. Education is beautiful. Respect your education. Most of you out there, you spend all your time on social medias trying to adopt a life that you cannot reach. My friend, you are living on a fake life and one day it will translate under your head and you will definitely walk, put that fire off. Nobody is going to put it off for you. We are living in a capitalist world where things are getting harder every day. You don't think of the future for you. You are thinking of the present for you. At the end of the day, you jeopardize your future and your present. That's why some of them, when they drop out, they think they can still make it. If you want to make it, then join in the skills. Do something, but don't sleep in your house until daybreak you wake up. All you do is to keep baking around. Your colleagues, you think you will live by that? Please don't do, a, do away from that because you want to have a kids tomorrow. You want to have family tomorrow. If you are a youth out there, whatever you are doing there, there are skills. My friend, forget it. Skills are not meant for dropout. Even those who are educated with PhD should make sure they learn skills. So learning skills is, in fact, to me, more valuable than anything. 
then asana so let us know underrated skills and young people's underrated skills in this country they think if you are a mechanic or you are a carpenter you are nobody these are noble works they are noble professional i call them professionals you know why because they earn their living from their mind not from their tricks you understand that and we know the tricks working on in our offices at least they are noble they sweat for it they use their minds to earn my friends skills are beautiful don't leave them out do you understand that never give up senabu it is only in the gambian youths i see them giving up mm -hmm. don't ever give up my friend there are sometimes god will teach you lessons these lessons are things that you should learn from don't take this lesson as a downfall for you believe in god and make sure know that the same god who put those hardships on you one day will uplift it all you need is a belief and work hard that's what the youths need finally i just want to say this let us deviate from politics let us be part of it but let us deviate from its dirty game everybody is part of politics because even the family you rule as a parents is politics you understand that we are part of it let us practice good pra political system let us not allow us to be tools to be used by politicians who at the end of the day they will just laugh at us and whatever we want they will never do it and it is us who will suffer behind them to make sure that we give them what we want i want to give you this if you are wise enough we are wise enough any politician that comes to us as youth we will tell you very very clear we are united and we want to make sure that when we vote for you you do what benefits the country and that's exactly what youth need and not to be partisans you can be belong to a party but make sure that your party is selling a good idea let us not allow politicians to divide i keep saying this and that is exactly what is happening i have my fellow friends who hate me because i just make a comment about something that is about the country and he feel like his poli party politics his political party is not selling that agenda he hates me that means politicians are dividing us politics is dividing us so we should not allow that senabu this country can only be developed if we use our ideas we compete for ideas and stop competing for our individual pockets this country will only develop if youths come together and have a good mindset and work towards their own country and a mindset failures make a country fails because the knowledge is not translating to resources we have let us not leave our country lying down just because the partisanly ruling is not in support of us or i'm not in support of the person they don't own this country politicians don't own this country we give them they are our servants we should make sure that we work with them to develop our country and that's what the youths need youths of today just to conclude by saying this if you want to be a person with wisdom respect yourself so that was all we had for you in this session of Coffee With. That was, I can say, a really interesting interview. It was intense, it was personal, and it was touching. And Baba really touched, you know, the minds and the hearts of the people. And I'm saying that, you know, his word of wisdom is something to go by. Education is important. Respect your education. Respect your elders. So that was all we had. I'm thanking my cameraman. He's done such a great job. Ibrahim Abaji. And um, yeah, I'll be signing out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.